Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will study about the implementation of bubble sort algorithm in Python. But before diving into the implementation, I first want to make you understand the algorithm behind bubble sort. So algorithm means writing step by step that what do you have to perform the logic of the bubble sort algorithm and then uh, we'll convert this particular algo into the code that we want to write in Python. Okay. So now the bubble sort algorithm will take as an input or as its argument two values. The first is the list of elements that has to be sorted and the second is the number of elements that you want to uh, that are present in this list that you want to sort. Okay. Now this value n can also be calculated from the list that you are passing or you can calculate it before calling the uh, function and then pass it to the function it is completely your choice but the value n will be required and let's see how it will be needed inside the algorithm so now in the bubble sort algorithm as we have seen in the previous video also during different passes the list of elements that has to be sorted gets divided into two parts the section or the part containing the sorted elements and the part containing the unsorted elements so i is a variable in this algorithm that will uh, we are keeping this variable i that will keep track of the number of sorted elements after every pass and as soon as the value of i becomes n minus 1 that means we have sorted n minus 1 elements then we will stop this particular code or we will stop this particular algorithm because as soon as n minus 1 elements get sorted the last nth element will automatically be present at its correct position okay so i is a variable that we are maintaining that keeps track of number of sorted elements and initially this value will be zero this value will be incremented by one after every pass okay and this will maintain this particular while loop so that this while loop does not go into infinity it does not run infinite number of times and it breaks as soon as we have all the elements sorted so it will come out of the bubble sort algor algorithm now inside each iteration sorry if inside each pass we will do multiple iterations and each iteration means comparing two elements that are present in the adjacent pair okay so how many elements have to be compared or how many pairs we have to consider in each pass will be tracked by this variable j so initially in the beginning of each pass the value of j will be always zero because in every pass in the beginning we are comparing the first pair of adjacent elements which starts at index value 0 and uh, the second element of this pair is at present at index value 1. So j is equal to 0 which is the first element of the pair that we will consider in each pass. Okay, And in each pass we will compare the element at index value j and j plus 1. Now since every pass is sorting some number of elements and in the subsequent passes we do not want to compare those sorted elements among themselves so we are putting a condition on j we are putting a condition that uh, j should not exceed the uh, the index value such that it crosses into the sorted part so n minus i minus 1 maintains a track of the elements that are still unsorted and we only want j to be within that range of unsorted elements that are present and we do not want j to take a value that is the value of a sorted part of the bubble sort list that is why we are putting the condition that as long as j is less than n minus i minus 1 so i is the number of sorted elements n is the num total number of elements and total elements minus the sorted elements minus 1 because why this minus 1 because if there are four 
unsorted elements their index values would be 0 1 2 and 3 so we want j to be less than 3 then only this comparison with j and j plus 1 will be valid because j plus 1 will take the value uh, 2 plus 1 which is equal to 3 and this particular value is also 3 so we do not want j to take the value 3 otherwise j plus 1 would become 4 and in this case 4 is the index of a sorted part of the list okay so i'll repeat this logic once again see j is the uh, index value of the unsorted element and this uh, this is the index value of the first element in the pair that we are currently considering for comparison now the uh, we want j to be always take a value that is the index of the unsorted elements and never take the value of the sorted part of the uh, list because we do not want to make comparisons with the sorted part so what we do we take in uh, for every pass we consider how many elements are already sorted the total elements that will be sorted is given by i the total number of elements is given by n and n minus i minus 1 will give me the first element of the last pair that I have to compare okay the this minus 1 we are doing because we will compare the element at index j and at index j plus 1 okay so inside every uh, iteration or inside the second loop we are comparing the two elements for ascending order we will compare whether the first element of the pair is greater than the second element if this is true we will swap them okay if you are doing this bubble sort for descending order you will change this particular sign you will change it to a less than sign because in if you are arranging for descending order you will swap the elements when the first element is smaller than the second element okay now if you have compared the pair you want in the next iteration the next pair to be compared that is why you will increase j and this is how the bubble sort algorithm will work okay so the bubble sort algorithm maintains two important variables i and j i maintains the outer loop that that runs uh, till all the elements are sorted and the inner loop is maintained by the variable j and this loop runs till every pair present in the unsorted part of that list is compared for this particular pass that is governed by i okay now let's switch to the uh, python implementation and see how this particular bubble sort code will be implemented in python okay now coming to the python implementation i have written first the code of bubble sort and then i have written the same example here that we have considered in the theory class previously so coming to the first code that is the bubble sort code since uh, the bubble sort code can automatically calculate the length or the number of elements present in the list i am not passing n as its argument I'm only passing one argument to the bubble sort algorithm, which is my list that has to be sorted. Okay. This will be the list of elements that we want to sort. Now inside the bubble sort, first I'm calculating the value of n. Okay. This is the length of my list. Then I am running the first loop that will go from i, which is initialized uh, to 0 because when i write this expression it means a range of n will create a sequence of numbers starting from 0 and going till n minus 1 okay so the i value will be 0 in the first iteration and the last iteration will take the value of i as n minus 1 now inside this uh, loop i am using another for loop because the outer loop governs how many passes I have that means 
how many uh, complete uh, go I will do through all the elements of the list. Now in each pass, I will do multiple iterations, which will be comparison of the elements in each adjacent pair. Okay, so uh, then I use the variable j for it. j goes uh, in the range of 0 till n minus i minus 1. I could have directly written here uh, like this. It would have worked in that way also. So uh, you can use any font of any format of writing the function range. Now what you will do inside this, you will compare whether the element, the first element of the pair is greater than the second element of the pair that you are considering and if this is so you will say that swap the two elements now this particular statement is very important in python because this particular statement will perform two tasks it will swap the position of i with j and it will sorry it will swap the position of element at location j with the element at location j plus 1 and also vice versa that means it will also swap the position of it will change the position of element at j plus 1 with element at present at location j so that is what is swapping is changing both the locations so first what it will do it will assign this particular value to this particular location and it will assign this particular value to this particular location okay so uh, in the bubble sort algorithm this is all you have to do every time you uh, execute this particular if condition then j will be incremented even if this if condition is not true in the next uh, for for loop iteration this j will be incremented and once this entire range is crossed i will be incremented and the next pass will begin okay so let's execute this code and then let's take an example the same example that we have considered in theory class also this is a list that i have created and i'm running the bubble sort algorithm on this list so let's see so it has given me the output the sorted list is minus 9 1 4 7 8 and 13 okay so this is how the simple implement how you can simply implement bubble sort in python this was all for today's video i hope you have understood it please let us know uh, your comments and feedback for this video in the comment section thank you for watching till we meet in the next video mind your exam